All right, so chapter nine, part three. Polar and rectangular forms of equations. So polar is what we've been working with the last couple of days. That's where you have a radius and a theta. Radius is the distance from the origin. The theta is the angle to the horizontal. Now rectangular is exactly what you've always worked with, an x and a y value. So you've got so many x units right or left and so many y units up or down to find a point. So we're going to talk about the way to go back and forth between those values. <coughs> Sometimes it's good to understand what... Uh, the applications of any mathematical idea are, and uh, a big one for polar graphing is mapping. So, you know, if you're taking off from uh, an airport in Edinburgh and you want to know how far you can make it on a tank of gas or whatever, the polar graph would be a logical way to do that. And you'll probably, if you ever watch, uh, you know, like air traffic controllers, in on movies and stuff, you'll see a polar graph with their airport at the center often, and uh, like radar and so forth. Interesting thing about England, they're uh, above the Arctic Circle, and yet they have a very temperate climate as a consequence of some, some wind anomalies. Okay, so anyway, that's one way we might apply this idea. We're going to convert between polar and rectangular coordinates, and we're going to convert between uh, polar and rectangular equations. So we're going to take equations from one type and move it to the other, vice versa, and then points also. So here are some formulas you need to know. So if I start with polar and I go to rectangular, these are the formulas I use. So from polar to rectangular, I'll use these two. You guys know how geometry works. You'll see why that's the case. Trigonometry in this case. X equals R cosine theta. Y equals R sine theta. You notice it's uh, always the case that the X coordinate relates to the cosine. It's a good mental note to make so you don't ever mix those up. All right, any questions about this? Stay with me, Jesse. Tempting as it might be to punch columns. Hold off on that. So uh, here we've got a polar point. And we want to find a corresponding rectangular point. Well, remember that x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So this is going to be 2 times the cosine of pi over 3, and 2 times the sine of pi over 3. That, of course, is not a good final answer, but you can get to there. The rest of the problem is fairly trivial. What's the cosine of pi over 3, Ian? Mm -hmm. I said that so fast. Yes, correct. Good job. So 2 times 1 half. He was ready like a maniac for that question. Rowdy, what about the sine of pi over 3? This should be a strong hint. This is only ever paired with another certain value on the unit circle. Incorrect. So, once again, I will warn you guys, the unit circle is not an optional bit of learning for this course. You must know it to do well. Jesse, what's the sign of pi over three? Uh, not three mm -hmm. Good. So one, Three, so we wind up with here. Wait, so that's what I said. You said radical two over two, right? Yeah, one and So one comma square to three. You did say that. You said it was so little conviction. You mumbled it mm -hmm. as to obfuscate the answer. 
So one comma square root of three is the corresponding rectangular point. <coughs> So the polar point, uh, 2 pi over 3 can be described with these rectangular coordinates. Any questions about that? All right, you will have a couple quiz questions on this, which I'm going to open up after this lesson. If past behavior can be said to predict the future, which it almost always does, you guys won't bother to take this quiz until the very last day it's open, and then only in the last few minutes, because I most likely forgot most of this. So it's kind of moved, but whatever. Okay, so negative 5, 45 degrees. Find the rectangular coordinates for that. Let's do that together. So x equals, what's the formula for x? Hold on. Good. Tell me what r is in this case. Good. And then what is the formula for y, Richard? Um, r sine theta equals negative pi. Good. What should I plug in for? <coughs> Cosine of 45, Chris. Um, I'd equal 2 over 2. Excellent. What should I plug in for sine of 45 degrees, Rowdy? Chance to redeem yourself. Excellent. Good job, sir. <laughs> you know, it really makes sense for the X and Y coordinates to match because do you see how the 45 degree polar ray is Y equals X? And so that they will always match when it's and this is the angle. Okay, so our XY that corresponds to that polar point. Too toasty. Yeah, it's unusual. Weather's really shifted in my lifetime. Climate change. Al Gore predicted this. Okay, so um, part C. Now we've got a negative angle. So we've got an X and a Y, R cosine theta, R sine theta respectively. It's negative 240. That's going to be a difficult way to express that angle. So if I go negative 240 degrees, Colin, what's the positive angle that shares that terminal ray? Yeah, 60 degrees. 60 would be here, so not quite. Well, they have to add up to. What's a whole circle? So 240 plus what is 360? Yeah, so I could also say positive 120 degrees. Those are the same thing. So good thing to keep in mind as we work this out. So this is four times the cosine, and I'm going to leave this at negative 240 degrees, but we know that it's also just 120 or 2 pi over 3. All right. 
So let's see here. Ian, tell me what the cosine of negative 240 degrees is. Negative 75 So you're giving me a, a radian measure, and I'm asking for a cosine. Good. <coughs> and then, uh, Jesse, what about the sine of negative 240? He incorrectly identified this as its cosine. Three over two, good. My teaching strategy is like an introvert's worst nightmare, right? I'm going to call on you, but a lot. If you get it wrong, I'm going to call on you more, not less. It's called calling on non volunteers. It's a way to ensure learning as you go through the lesson. In case you guys ever become a teacher. Negative two is what we get here, and then we get to two on the square root of three here. So our point that corresponds to four negative two forty is gonna be two negative two comma two on the square root of three. If you superimpose them over each other, yes. So you would, which I won't try to draw because it would just be a mess. But if you had a polar graph and a rectangular graph over each other, you could navigate to that point either by going to negative 240 and then four units, or you could go negative two and then two on the So good point. Okay. Um, Has the same radius. Okay, so uh, here's one for you. Tell me the rectangular coordinates that correspond to negative eight comma three hundred degrees. Negative eight and then three hundred degrees. It's also a teaching strategy I employ. It's called I do, you do, we do. Be careful. You're in. As far as these are concerned, you're here. But if you're traveling away from that angle, but this is still the Well, you can have positive x and negative y. See how it goes down further than it goes up.
If there's anything important? I don't think so. Okay, so let's uh, let's move along. Tell me what X is in this case, Rachel. Which is um, well, we'll just write it like this. Okay, okay so um, and then negative eight cosine three hundred degrees. Good. And then what comes next? Negative eight times one half. And that was uh, again the inhibiting factor for so many people. Didn't get this part right. Good job, Rachel. Excellent. Crystal, tell me about the why. Good job, buddy. Okay, so everybody see how that works? Don't miss one of these just of this. Come on, guys. <clears throat> Get that squared away. All right, rectangular to polar. We got a couple different scenarios here. R is, so this is when we start with rectangular and we're going to polar. R is always this. But theta is going to depend on certain things. Um, if x is greater than zero, oh, I hate that particular. If x is greater than zero or x is less than zero. So if x is greater than zero, you use this. If x is less than zero, you use this, which is the same thing, it's just in radians and degrees. So, remember how the tangent inverse was constrained to quadrant four and quadrant one? This is a consequence of that, because it can't give us an answer in Q2 and Q3. We've got to add pi radians or 180 degrees to it when we're in Q2 or Q3. They are, they're just in radians and degrees. So the last two formulas are effectively the same. So that's when we start with a rectangular point, two comma seven or whatever, and we want to convert that to a rectangular or to a polar rather, from rectangular to polar. <sighs> okay, so let's do it. Find two pairs of polar coordinates for this point. Remember, how many ways are there to express any polar point? Four. So we're going to find two of those four. doesn't matter which two. So here we've got x equals 2, y equals negative 4. So remember, r equals the square root of x squared plus y squared, this formula. So that's going to be the square root of 2 squared plus negative 4 squared. So that's 4 plus 16. That's 20. What's my perfect square factor here, Ian? 4 square root of 
Yes, so I say square root of 4 times square root of 5, or 2 on the square root of 5. So when I factor out that perfect square factor, I then need to take its root for that final step. So 2 on the square root of 5 is what we wind up with for R. Now we need to find theta. So x is positive, meaning we just use the tangent inverse. If x is negative, we use the tangent inverse plus 180 degrees and plus pi. But in this case, we just need the tangent inverse of y over x. And that's going to be our theta. If I plug that in the calculator, make sure I'm in degree mode because I'm using an inverse tangent. <clears throat> so tangent inverse, negative 2, that reduces to it's about negative 63.4 degrees. So a polar point to describe this could be um, 2 on the square root of 5, comma, negative 63.4 degrees. Another way to say it, 2 on the square root of 5, comma, and then I could use a corresponding positive angle, which would be, let's see, 2, 90, 2.6. Let me just double check myself. Two ninety six point six. Okay, two ninety six point six. Forgot my decimal. So there's two ways to say that point in polar. Oh. No, the well, we're confining ourselves to either degrees or radians with that four. If you include radians as a separate expression, way to express it, then you got eight. The other ways holding would involve the negative radius and the opposing angle. In other words, the one that's 180 degrees on the other side. So again, it's just like this. I can look at you and take a couple steps towards you, or I can turn my back to you and take a couple steps backwards. So this is that turn my back to you and take a couple steps backwards strategy. And the angles here, just in case you're curious, see, it would be 116.6. And then also a negative, let's see, if I add 360 or subtract 360 from that, negative 243.4. So these would be the other two. Good question, though. Other questions? All right. Here's another one. Notice our x is negative this time. That's potentially problematic because we can't just take the tangent inverse for our theta. So let's do um, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared which is negative 2 squared plus negative 4 squared. 4 plus 16, radical 20, 2 on the square top. Same as last problem. Boring. Oh, good. We need some driving, dude. Okay, so... Uh, Finding theta will be a little different here. We're going to confine ourselves to degrees basically with this because when you use the tangent inverse function on your calculator, it's good to always have it in degrees. The radians just don't make sense. Call them not a good time for uh, among us or whatever. No, you're playing on your calculator. Never mind. That's okay. I approve of that. Look like a really massive phone for just a moment. 
like the Samsung Note 11 or something. All right, so tangent inverse. Y over X in this case is going to be uh, positive 2. Then I add 180 to that. So 243.4 degrees about. So we want two pairs of these. So I've got uh, two on the square root of five, comma, 243.4 degrees. And then if I want to know the uh, negative angle that's the same as that, I'm going to subtract 360. So negative 116.6. And then, of course, as I explained in the previous problem, the other two would involve a negative radius. But this satisfies the brief for the problem. The part about this that makes it really easy to miss is if you forget to do this when this is negative. So when you have a negative x, you have to add 180 to that uh, theta. Okay. One for you. Tell me what the uh, two pairs of polar coordinates or negative five comma negative six are. Not all radicals reduce, by the way, so remember that. Sure, buddy. You gave up on Desmos? Yeah. I was always impressed with how well you used that, man. So I looked around, everybody I saw had pretty good answers. Hold on, what's the radius in this case? Good. And then Ian, what's my theta? Say again. A little different than what my calculator said. Let's double check. So six over five. And then plus one eighty. So 230.2. I don't know, maybe if you put some. Oh, I didn't put the six. Okay. So 230.2 is what you should have done. And then what's an alternate theta for this, uh, Holden? Like so? No, 129.8. So those are our two polar points.
two ways to express the same homework one, I should say. Good job. All right. So now you know how to work with points. We went from polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar. Okay, so we're going to this one. Rectangular equations to polar equations. So identify the graph of this, then write the equation in polar form. Support your answer by graphing the polar form and the rectangular form, making sure they look the same. So you see how this is going to be a circle? I can tell by looking at it. We studied conics. This is a circle with what center, Rachel? Hasn't been, hasn't been that long. Okay, so it's going to be like this, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So you're looking for h and k. That'll be your x coordinate of your center. H. So compare that to this and tell me what H has to be. Okay, so. Good. And then hold the what about K? Good. So it's got a center of negative 2, 0. What's its radius, up Rowdy? Correct. I just took a test on this like a week and a half ago. You can't just purge that stuff, man. Not how uh, advanced mathematics works. Okay, so identify the graph of that. We identified it as a circle with this center and this radius. Write the equation in polar form. So this is where it gets kind of tricky algebraically. Chapter 9 has been very easy on you algebraically so far. But this is an exception to that trend. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to let x equal r cosine theta and then y equal r sine theta. We're going to work it out and see what happens. Okay, so um, r cosine theta plus 2 quantity squared plus r sine theta quantity squared equals 4. So there's an equation that relates r to theta and no x's and y's are involved, but there's plenty we could do to make this uh, simpler. So let's see, I've got um, r squared Cosine squared theta, that's first times first. So when I square a binomial, I multiply this binomial by itself. So if I think about it that way, this times itself is first times first. And then outer times outer, so that'd be plus 2r cosine theta. Inner times inner would also be plus 2r cosine theta. And then last times last is plus 4. So that's this bit. Okay, and then the second part here is pretty easy. Plus r squared sine squared theta equals 4. So I see some like terms we can combine. I can subtract 4 from each side and 
those will cancel. I see these two I can make into um, 4R cosine theta, so let's write this first. R squared cosine squared theta plus 4R cosine theta um, plus R squared sine squared theta. All right, so now to combine these two terms is going to be tricky because one's a cosine and one's a sine. We're going to have to go back to chapter five. Ready to chapter five, the identities. Remember that this was always true. You guys remember that? So you see how I can write these two terms like this? Now let me go back to that. Black. Well, better not skip that step. So now I can factor out R squared here. So I can take this and just turn it into one. So R squared times one plus 4R cosine theta equals zero. All right, so subtract this from each side to get R squared equals negative 4R cosine of theta. Divide both sides by R, and I get R equals negative 4 cosine theta. And we'll check it to make sure that that's a circle with center negative 2, 0, radius 2. So make sure I'm in radian mode here. Negative 4 cosine theta. Let's see. 0 to 2 pi, that's good. Negative 5 pi, that's good. Good work. Circle, center at negative two, zero, radius of two. Oh yeah. All right, let me know if any of that seems mysterious to you. We do run a lot of skills here. encapsulates a lot of things you've learned in this semester. In fact, a little bit from each chapter, I think. Except for eight. From, well, that's six. No matrices in here. Okay. Next. we got 2xy equals 4. So what the heck is that going to look like in rectangular? Well, if I rewrite it, I can say y equals 4 divided by 2x, or uh, 1 over, I'm sorry, 2 over x. That's going to be the reciprocal. You remember that graph uh, looked like this? I don't know if you remember that parent function back in the day, but the reciprocal functions look something like that, so we should expect this kind of shape when we get the polar. And you can you can use your calculator in function mode to confirm that. Yep. Okay, so we're good. Go back to polar and we'll test the uh, 
whatever we get here, and we'll see if it makes sense. All right, so since you saw me do the last problem, now tell me what I should do here. I'm going to substitute a certain expression for x and y. Uh, yeah. Well, you're a little bit ahead, so first we need to uh, plug in that, for... The, the H and the K term? No, that's from the circle. So this one's not a circle. Look at the first thing I did here. Oh, your equation equals uh, radius times cosine of theta. Good. And y equals radius times sine of theta. Good. So, um, and I can divide both sides by uh, 2 to get uh, r squared cosine theta sine theta equals 2. R times R is this. This time time of sign. So let's we want to get R by itself over here. And we like we like writing with the reciprocal functions. So another way to write this would be two times secant theta cosecant theta R squared equals that. So if we want to put this in the calculator and check it, we'll need to use the square root property. And I'll leave it like this because the calculator doesn't have secant and cosecant. So we'll need to put it in that way in the calculator. So this is the answer right here. This is the final answer. That equals R squared. But this is so we can plug it in the calculator and make sure our graph matches. So positive first. 2 divided by cosine theta sine theta. Oops, we need a parenthesis. Sine theta. I think that'll work. And then negative square root 2 divided by cosine theta sine theta leave that work sure enough same graph all right questions about any of that So an important thing to remember, don't get lost in the detail here. This first step is always going to be your, it's going to be the same for any equation. You just plug this in for X, this in for Y. Then you start doing some algebra. You might have to get creative. You might have to pull out an identity. You might not. But this step will always be present. Okay. And they used they used a double angle identity to get super crazy. Not necessary. Okay, so here's one for you. Give this one to go. You've got x equals y squared. Tell me what that would look like in polar form. X equals y squared. Remember the step I said that would always happen.
Lord. Yeah, there's about <laughs> I would say here instead of what you did, just divide both sides by R and see what happens. Good sir. And that's a couple of good places. Drop the ball. Drop the ball. Alright. So I've just got to agree with the one email. I'm an AP class. The whole question is plain and simple. Is it AP computer science principal? AP computer science A. Uh, principles was what we decided on, I thought. We just double checked that. Did you ever do the training? No. no we, uh, they canceled it. They canceled the one. I sent you an email about Kansas State was going to do one online, I thought. Well, if so, we never did it. Okay. So I'm not sure if you certified man. I don't know. I need to go find that question. Mm -hmm. I need to cancel the one. Yeah. So that's you go with this. Do you think it's A? Principles. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Computer science principles is the one you're doing. That's the one we discussed, yeah. I can do either one. Before it occurred, you have to do a syllabus and send it to her for her to submit. I didn't know there was such a move. Right. If it's a, officially an AP course. So. Worst case scenario, we can do it unofficially this year. And the kids can just, you know, on their own decide to take the test that they want to get. Yeah, that was an okay. I think as long as you don't call it an AP course, the, anybody can take an AP test any time they want. So they could, uh, they could take my computer science principles of course, and then on their own choose to take the AP test. So it would still be kind of an unofficial AP course. We have to do that right now. Okay. Uh, all right. So, Derek, it's been right. I see him on there. I don't think it is. Yeah, I'm like lost at this point. Is that good? Yeah. Oh, you're lost now. No, this is good. Oh, yeah, this is good. But you, you can rewrite this a, a little bit differently, but yeah, this is good. Okay, well, I'm just going to be looking around with you. Divide both sides by all. Okay, so does that just cancel it out on both sides? Mm -hmm. No, because one side is squared. It should just be R cosine theta equals R squared sine theta. I think it was worse for the correct Let's see. Okay. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's So uh, you would have to divide both sides by R. So this would be one over R. I would think. Right here, I would just divide by R. And then divide by All right, guys, uh, appreciate your hard work on this. Let's go over it together real quick. So, as always, the first step is to say x equals R cosine theta. And y equals r sine theta. So we get this after we apply that square. Then I divide both sides by r. And I get cosine theta equals r 
sine squared theta divided both sides by sine squared theta. And I get, um, I'm just going to switch the sides here. R equals cosine theta over sine squared theta. And that's one representation. We could uh, change this around a little bit and say it is cosine theta over sine theta times 1 over sine theta, which would give us R equals cosine over sine is the cotangent. Then 1 over sine is the cosecant. So cotangent theta, cosecant theta is probably the best answer, but this is perfectly fine. And to put it in the calculator, we'll have to use this anyway because you don't have those things in your calculator. So let's see what cosine theta sine squared theta looks like. All right, cosine theta divided by sine of theta squared. Yeah, and that's the rightward parabola we expected. So that's the. Uh, so this is the best answer, but this is the one we're going to plug in our calculator anyway. So, little, little algebraic mistakes I noticed on a few of your papers. Uh, just be cautious, be meticulous, like you had to be back in chapters one, two, and three when we did that algebra so frequently. All right, any questions about anything? So, what about a polar equation to a rectangular equation? So, we've got theta equals pi over 4. Well, the easiest way to do this um, is going to be by using this. So we don't have an R in this case, but we can, uh, if we can get there nonetheless. So X equals R times cosine of pi over 4 is radical 2 over 2, or Y equals R times sine of pi over 4 is also radical 2 over 2. So. You see how those are the same expression? So I could just say x equals y or y equals x. So you get to here and then look for a way to relate them together algebraically. In this case, it's pretty obvious. Indeed, yeah. And if you think about it, that makes sense. Yeah, because pi over 4 would be that y equals x line. Tricky indeed. So this time R equals five. Well, we know that's a circle. We know it's centered at the origin. Uh, so we know where we want to wind up. Um, So, we want to wind up with a graph that has five units of radius and circle centered at the origin. And I know that's going to be this. So that's where we want to wind up. Maybe we can do that. Let's see. Let's 
so x equals um, r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. So if I think about the information I've got, I've got fives here. So if I just type in um, if I square both sides here, it's what this is where I can get the relationship. So x squared equals 25 cosine squared theta. Y squared equals 25 sine squared theta. Once I've got them squared, I can relate these to each other. So let's see. Remember that the cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared theta from that Pythagorean identity. Uh, so x squared equals 25 minus uh, 25 sine squared theta. And you see how that's also y squared? So I can say x squared equals 25 minus y squared. Add y squared to each side. And we got that. which is what I did at first, but I wanted to show you there is an algebraic way to do it. Okay. Um, but yes, of course, you would think, okay, that's a circle with center of the origin, radius 5. You would just write the answer without doing any work. In most cases, uh, of course, they could change the polar representation around a little bit, make it more complex, and it wouldn't be quite so obvious. So there are cases where this work would be necessary. Okay, C is in Charlie. So R equals two sine theta in rectangular form, and then identify its graph. So two sine theta, that's gonna be a circle, I think. Let's look at the polar graph. So as Jesse says, we can look at this and it's a circle with center uh, 0, 1, has a radius of 1, looks like. Um, but So we could write the equation, but you can also derive it algebraically, even if it is tricky. So remember that x equals r cosine theta, and y equals r sine theta. Okay, so um, I do this. Yes, I think I plug that in. Sine theta over y. And a couple different approaches we might take. Probably squaring both sides again here. Yeah, punch in two sine theta for r is probably the way to go. Relationship is not jumping out at me here. Let me see if there's a strategy I'm missing.
Okay. Oh, okay. There. Yeah, R squared equals X squared plus Y squared. So uh, the one I didn't write is the one we're going to use in this case. Remember that R equals this. You guys remember that? Yeah. So if I square both sides, I get this. So if I take that original equation and square it, that. And so that's x squared plus y squared equals 4 sine squared theta. Then how do we get rid of that theta? Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of confused about this step, ladies and gentlemen. Give me just a second. So instead of squaring both sides, they just multiplied both sides by r. So that would be 2r sine theta. Oh, okay. Yeah, there. That would do it too. So instead of squaring both sides from the original equation to get this, they just multiply both sides by r. So that would give you 2r sine theta. So r times r is r squared. 2 sine theta times r is 2 r sine theta. So now we can replace r squared with this expression. And here r sine theta, you see it's just y. Like this. So now we've got to complete the square and do all that good stuff. But it's very solvable from this point. So what I would do is x squared plus y squared minus 2y plus blank equals 0 plus blank. Or blank is what we complete the square with. <coughs> so uh, 1 half of negative 2 is a negative 1. Negative 1 squared is positive 1. If I add 1 to the left, I must add 1 to the right. That's it. That's what we wanted to get to. It was a little more challenging than the rest, but kind of fun. And if, once again, as Jesse pointed out, you, you would know the answer just from your understanding of conics. So it would only be really a curiosity working towards it. All right. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is chapter nine. What are some other uses for polar graphs? Well, GPS, mapping the orbits of uh, satellites using uh, uh, the pathways of the planets to plot a satellite's trajectory. You know, you don't just send it, if we send a satellite to Saturn, you don't just send it to Saturn. You're going to use... Uh, other planetary bodies as a slingshot to increase its velocity, make it get there a lot quicker. So they, for example, would take a, they would wait until Mars was in a certain trajectory and they would go, Brian has got to hit his jewel pipe. Go ahead, Brian. Sorry. He's been too long without nicotine. Really need to break that habit, young lady. Mm -hmm. That's what they all say. Yeah. <laughs> 
yeah, because it's often the case you got to pee 45 minutes after you wake up. Okay, so um, let's see here. I've got a, I've got a little task for us. So let's try this real quick. This will be just for fun. I will give you some kind of grade reward if you win, though. Let's see if I can. Sir, uh, I'm just going to tell you what you said is correct. Uh huh. It does not, because I called the lady over the CTE thing, and she said it does not affect CTE's purposes at all. You're right. It's just it, it, it's for AP purposes only. Right. To what you said is correct. But she did suggest that we go online and look to see if there's not something online somewhere that you could do real quick. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that, but you, what you said earlier is correct. Okay. Just going to get you know that. Good. So that'll cover us for next semester in either case. Yes. Okay, sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So uh, if you would take out your phones. Oh, wait a minute. I got to do the. I got to do the uh, friendly nickname. Oh yeah, that's all. So you don't uh, do Blaze It for twenty sixty nine, Kanye West birthday party on me. Weird. Yellow cat. Yellow cat. That's kind of appropriate because you're a blonde haired person. Let's go, Rowdy. You're behind the curve, brother. Dr. Koala. <laughs> That's dope. That's a pretty awesome one. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. One more. Rowdy's still getting there. Nope. All right, here we go. Graphing polar equations. You might want to have a calculator handy. Is this for a grade? For a bonus. I'll give you a bonus on the homework. That circle is two units, by the way. The concentric circle, this. This is two units. This is four. What's that? Four, three, two. Oh, somebody got it right. Good job, Rachel. Yellow cat. Oh, big lead for yellow cat. Wasn't the yellow one like on the right side? Yeah, I don't know. I I I you guys are not great at this. Good job, sir. Remember, I said have your calculator handy. Five, four, three, two. All right, we're getting better. Both of those were correct, by the way. 
Number four. Why were those two graphs identical? No. Is 100% blue guys? No idea. Think about identities, bros. Okay, now you got to get See, not <laughs> good job, good job. <laughs> Few speed rounds. Five, four, three, two. One. Oh. All right. Let's see who's in the lead right now. I I mean, no. Rowdy. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> you do have time to graph them. <laughs> this is one I used as an example in class. By the way. X. Good job. Excellent. So five out of seven. We're getting better. <laughs> Two. One. Oh, God. Oh, God. I told you speed rounds, bros. Speed rounds. Three seconds. You're going up. 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 Seven, six, five. Oh yeah, six out of seven. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, back to some. Space ants on fire, BT Dub. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah, I'm gonna roll. Okay, wait. You what now? In is odd. Or in is odd. How many petals are there? Oh, it's odd. That's so easy. Well, okay, the answer. Good job. Wait, what's the answer? Five, 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 five should be. That's a boo boo. No. Yeah, that's a boo boo. Sorry. Oh, oh, this is the same answer. Yeah, that's not. Yeah, I don't know why it did that. I think maybe I tried to make you only have two answers and it did this. So. My bad. You killed me. You killed me. My bad. I did not get that one. Oh, okay, well, now we got to be sure which one we play. That was never playing in TikTok. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's TikTok. Oh, dang it. Oh, 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 no. Uh, sure. Oh, no, wait, I think I'm wrong. Give it to us. No, 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 no. no way I'm moving back up. Hey. Rowdy, chill on me, chill knocking on, on the way. door. I'll give you the money. Oh. Hey, what time is this class over? Six minutes. Oh, we're good. Hey, is it very different? That's because it's easy. Oh, you know it's easy. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Did he make you answer A? <laughs> Rachel's not messing around. She she wants this. I need this. I need this. You think you're really funny, bro? Let's have some fun. Yeah. Yeah. We did this one in class. I'm pretty proud of it. Just click your buttons. Oh, you don't want to click your buttons. Yeah. Everybody say, oh, it's it. Everybody say, oh, it's it. Everybody say, oh, it's it. Nice. Oh, yeah. I still feel on fire. I still feel on fire.
That's what I'm talking about. Limicon, French for snail. They eat snails in France. I'm so smart. Get away from me. I'm so sexy. Right. Eight, seven, six, five. I'm too smart. I'm too smart. Oh, Ooh, Dr. Koala lost his streak, boys. Oh. Lead change. I know what I'm going to say. No, you're going to win one question. Yeah, I think we're going to call this up. Right. What? Oh, no. So think about those last few. Oh, I think they're wrong. I definitely just did oh. I'm wrong. I tried. I understand. Obviously, it's a dimple. I knew it. I'm behind you. I'm still in the I'm still in the third. You still can't beat me. I got a question. Oh. So think about that last one. Bro, that one's oh, the same answer. I'm built different. <laughs> <laughs> you should have inferred my logic. Yeah, get it wrong twice in a row, right? Shoot! This is going to be so close. No way I get it wrong three times in a row, right? No way. I'm putting yellow just because I feel like he would need that dinner. And no way I got it wrong three times. I got it wrong three times in a row. Let's go. Let's go. That, that one wasn't really fair because we didn't talk about that. I mean, I got it. Yeah, everybody, like, miss, everybody missed it. We knew everything but that. Oh, Dr. Koala's got to get you talking on this one. Okay, let's go. No. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't know. I just looked at it really fast. <laughs> no, I didn't win. <laughs> Oh, Come on, you guys are going to know me. I didn't make the most. Podium. Yellow oh, cat. Yes. Three. I mean, yellow oh, cat. Dr. Yes. Koala. Yes. 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 So what I'll do here is I'll give uh, I'll give Rachel plus one on the quiz, Ian plus three, and Jesse plus five on the quiz. Jesse, what do you want? He's crazy. Yeah, that's right. They were guessing quicker than you were. Yeah, I really sat there for You put TikTok. If you guys did, if you put the wrong answer on one of those, I was winning that. All right. Thank you guys for participating. That was fun. Okay, so real quick, the homework is uh, this. And if you want to take a picture real quick, I uh, I helped you out with a couple there. Is that quiz going to be available today? I'm going to turn it on right now. Yes, it's